At the Nova Open 2023 Warhammer community revealed Lady Duchard for the upcoming Warhammer the Old World range as part of the Britannian faction. Aside from the other recent reveals for the up-and-coming Bretonians, Britannia hasn't had an awful lot of love for a number of years. The last army book was in 6th edition and released in February of 2004. That's White Dwarf 290 here. You see me flicking through and these are the release announcements and adverts for that book. Quite a lot of miniatures were added to the range at the time that was expanded from the previous 5th edition army book and amongst them was this mounted damsel model here which I happen to have in my collection unpainted. Sculpted by Adam Clark, this model certainly holds a lot of nostalgia and some lovely middle hammer style charm. And she's not quite the lady that Elise Duchard looks like so let's call her um, Elsie Duckett. Welcome to Miniature Realms, my name's Stuart and let's paint Elsie. Now Elsie is a bit of an eBay rescue, I've cleaned her up as best as I could and the horse sculpt I've got isn't the one pictured in the magazine. I started by applying a very light grey-white um, Vallejo first layer, Zenithal of course, and I will follow up afterwards with a, with a cleaner white. For the cleaner white, I'm using Dead White from Game Air. It's a very smooth white and I want a really nice, smooth finish on the miniature. And the goal here is to almost get rid of all of the black. This is a very, very heavy zenithal. I just want to build in a little bit of shadow to help with the painting I'm going to use, using glazes and things to start with. But I do want the miniature to look quite light and quite crisp. So if you don't want to do this and you want to just crack straight in with a white you can do, a very good white rattle can will do a sufficient job and you can follow the rest of the tutorial without needing an airbrush. It's very subtle, but you can just see if I tilt the miniature, the shadow that's underneath there, and that's what I wanted to achieve with this and why I took the time to prime black first. So starting with the horse, I'm using some Wasteland Brown from Express Colour. Now I'm using a 50-50 mix here with their own medium. You can use any glaze medium really. Just make sure it's a matte version rather than a satin or a gloss. You don't want it to look too shiny. And what I'm doing here is painting in around the shadowed areas of the, the miniature first and then using a damp brush, I'm just blending it in and feathering it out over to the flatter areas. Therefore building up a little bit of highlight already into the miniature. If I want to darken an area, I can go back into the shadowed areas with the with the mix and apply it from there and again feather out. So you can build it up on layers if you feel it looks a little bit too light. I'm going for a sort of a tan coloured horse here, a bit like in the original heavy metal colour artwork. I quite like the idea to have longer white socks which will come onto a little bit later. So continuing around the miniature, building in from the dark areas and blending out. As I get down to the lower legs here, I want to be careful not to get too much paint below the what would be the, the knees, I suppose. I don't know if that's the official term on a horse, as I want those areas to be white, as I mentioned a moment ago. Now using a 50-50 mix of medium and Templar white from Express Colour, I'm going to shade the white areas, which are those lower parts of the horse's legs. Essentially, you're, you're shading with a, with a very faint glaze, which is acting a little bit like a wash in the recesses. But because it's a glaze and it's very thin, it's not really discolouring the top areas too much. Now I've opted for speed paint hardened leathered for the horse's hair and this paint is one of the the 1.0 the original version so it does reactivate slightly it won't be a problem here because I'm going to seal it before I do any further layers I won't do this on camera but I just brush on a little bit of matte varnish to help seal it in and in any case the colors I'm going to be using to paint over the top of this don't cause that issue too too much it's where you want to go back over with it with a completely different color or or go back to white or something you have a few issues if you get the the 2.0 version of it they, they don't really do that 
after those initial stages here, I'm just going back in with a little bit of white just to touch up any areas that the, the paint has run onto with using these thinner paints. That sometimes can happen. But the methods I'm using here, I'd like those surfaces to be as clean as possible to get the best effect out of the, the contrast, the glazes, that style of painting. Now using a little bit of Black Legion, I dot in the eyes and then using the same mix as I have done for the body, I'm just painting the bottoms of the hooves. I used to paint these in black and someone pointed out to me that they tend to be in the same colour as the horse's hair. I didn't want to go in with a hardened leather. I didn't feel it would be needed where these hooves are showing. They're going to be covered in weathering powders and things a little bit. Uh, so I decided to, to opt for the, the, the main body colour, which is a very similar shade, just a little bit weaker um, that I had on my palette already and it seems to have done the job quite nicely. Now going on to one of my favourites, this is Contrast Garagax Sewer. This tends to be my go-to for all leathers and things like that. And I'm going to start painting those in on the horse. I'm doing all the reins and main strapping apart from the cloth over the top. For the base of that cloth, I'm going to be using some contrast Talisar Blue. This is a beautifully vibrant blue, but it does hold really well in the recesses, giving that kind of natural shadow that we're looking for when we paint like this. And it's uh, fun and quite easy to highlight afterwards. And I'm trying to keep it just around the edges. I wanted a little bit of colour difference, um, but this colour is, is, is perfect for the kind of bright, almost cartoon-esque scheme that I'm going for in this older miniature. Now for some contrast Briar Queen Chill and some medium again, a 50-50 mix. This works a little bit like the Apothecary White um, and I find that you can do a different kind of shade on white. So if you wanted a more of a bluish looking white uh, you might have on a blouse or something rather than a warmer colour like you would with Skeleton Horde or something. If you thin this, this works exactly like uh, Apothecary White does which has a more of a greyer tone. To highlight the hair, I'm using orange brown and light brown from Model Color. I'm actually dry brushing these on, and these are the sort of thicker style dry brushes you see available from Artis Opus. These aren't actually my Artis Opus ones. I've finally died a death after about 18 months, and I was feeling a bit cheap, and I couldn't afford the £70 layout, and I picked some £25 ones up from Amazon. And they're okay. They're not quite as good, but they're definitely doing the job. So very, very, very light brushing, not much paint on the brush at all, and it just saves me having to fully edge highlight everything. I do go in at the end a little bit and reinforce some of those colors with a normal brush but this just really gets me started and here just using that lighter shade as I've just mentioned just really making it pop and tidy up a little just picking out certain areas just to, to make it stand out more So I'm using dark sand and off-white here for model colour to highlight the, the main areas of horse flesh. The first layer is, is straight dark sand and then I go back afterwards with a 50-50 mix and add a further highlight. This is quite a long process and you want to take your time to do this. Um, the longer you take and the thinner the layers of paint, the more you can blend it and make it smooth. I'm going for somewhere in the middle here. This is a, a higher end model than a very basic tabletop standard, but it is only a gaming miniature. This isn't anything for display. So I'm happy for the transition still to be visible to a certain extent. So this is a kind of a tabletop character level rather than a, a tabletop uh, rank and file level. But I'm still wanting to look nice but I'm not going to stress too much if you can see some of the translations and, and brush marks a little bit. When you get on to the final highlights with the with the white added in the 50-50 mix you'll see the difference that makes. You want to do just this in some smaller areas not not covering the previous layers it just makes it pop and stand out a little bit more. Now there might all, not always be logical areas that you think light would catch but again I'm going for that kind of cartoon-esque effect paint job that should really make it stand out on the gaming table. Again, take your time, work your way around, making sure you concentrate on areas around the ears and in the, the sort of tops of the eyes and the bridge of the nose and things. This is where the eyes will be drawn to the horse's face as much as they will be to the rider itself. Now on to some off-white to highlight the white areas. I am thinning this with medium to prevent the white being as chalky and make it easier to work with. And again, just like I did on the other areas of the flesh, I'm just painting in some highlight lines, leaving in the previous layers. And that just 
brings it in and blends it into the rest of the miniature more um, but allows that kind of grayness there to to look like shadowed areas you can pick out the hair that's on the horse's feet as well if you wished you could go or maybe should go in and paint those in the same color as the the mane and the tail but i quite like the idea of it looking white I use the same white mix to highlight on the horse's cloth here or blanket. Now these are quite thick lines, the miniature will be sitting on it anyway, so I'm not too too worried here, but I just wanted to, to put something in there so it, it looked like it was, was finished and I had a slight highlight on there. And these are from Scale Colour, so Scale 75, they're the Fantasy Games range, and we've got Hero Blue, Andrealden Blue. Um, I always struggle to say those in videos, and people have tried to help me before, but I will continue to mess it up. Now, the idea here is to use the darker blues first, and then mix in 50-50 for the, for the lighter blue as I build up. As before, I'm going for a relatively bright scheme here, and I want to make sure I leave some of the shadow in, but, but not too, too dark, and I think these paints do the job quite nicely. Now for some model colour flat earth and we start to highlight the leather areas. Now this is a plastic model with very undefined um, horse sort of strapping and things on here. So for this first layer I'm, I'm aiming quite central just to lift the colour a little bit and accentuate the shadow below. The highlight layer is model colour tan earth and this I treat slightly differently temptation would be to go straight down the middle with it but I'm doing a little bit sort of top and bottom highlights on all of the leather strapping so trying to keep the lines as thin as possible it's not easy on some of the areas of the horse as I said the detail isn't very well defined it's very very curved but just take my time and, and work my way around the top one being the most important but it just adds a little bit of definition around the the strapping on the horse's mane and saddle etc now the horse is coming to a close now, so I start working on the base. This is Black Lotus from Express Colour, and I'm just painting this in over the rocks. Now the rocks are a mixture of cat sand, cat litter in the UK, and a few bits of plaster of Paris. They are obviously primed white as well, and, and this Black Lotus just goes over them perfectly, and when it dries you get this kind of greyish rock effect. So while that's drying we work on the metals. We have Black Metal from Scale Colour, and I'm just going to paint in all of the metallic areas on the horse's bridle there i could have gone for gold but i thought there's so many warm colors on the, the horse's body and hair itself that this would stand out a little bit more to highlight those areas i'm using game as silver and if you've watched the channel before you'll know this is a, a very very repeated method and i just find it very very easy to use and it highlights perfectly now the base is dry enough, I can add a little bit of the texture so it can dry really well when I'm painting Elsie herself. Now this is a Vallejo Earth Texture Dark Earth. With the horse done and that all drying, I can pop it aside and we can get to work on Elsie. So to start off, we're going back to that 50-50 mix of Briar, Queen, Chill and Medium and we're going to be doing the white areas of the miniature. Again, I'm sticking to a similar paint scheme to what was shown in the Army book from 6th edition, inspired by rather than a copy. And I'm just covering over whatever this headdress is called, I'm not sure. But I'm just covering it over with this mixture and it will sit in all the recesses, shading it a little bit. Um, and I can go and highlight with white afterwards and it look, should look pretty good. I'm also returning to contrast Talisar Blue for her dress. I like the idea of tying that in with the colour that we put on the saddle cloth of the horse. Again, this just sits beautifully in all the recesses and gives you a really, really nice base to work from. Now on to Dwarf Skin Express Colour. I'm going to apply this on all of the areas of the flesh. It works fantastically, really, really sticks in all of the recesses and leaving you a very, very smooth finish. And I will be highlighting it the same way as Jan Hidalgo did on his channel where I stole this recipe from and it's just super perfect. Frustratingly, I lost some of the footage for this next stage, but using a deep purple and a gloomy violet, I'm just placing it into the recesses of the, the eye sockets and a little bit of the, the redder 
deep purple on the cheeks and then the gloomy violet just in the most shadowed areas you're really not touching the the higher areas um, I've used this method on quite a few of my tutorials so if you've watched a few before you'll be familiar with it you can see me a little bit here just going around and adding those in but that's how easy the skin can be back to contrast Garrick sewer and I'm going to be using this on her staff just for the lower part there's very little of it showing but you've got this nice sort of twisted notch carved wood here and rather than make it another sort of a, a painted looking color I wanted to make it look like it was a, a natural polished wood effect I also took the opportunity to block in the same color on the, the saddle that was showing. Now, very little of this is showing anyway, but as the leather color was the same on the horse, I thought it would match well for here. Now, I had to make her a blonde. Maybe she should be a brunette up against uh, um, Elise and Duchard, but I really like this color. So this is a Yandan yellow from a Citadel Contrast range. It's really, really bright and vibrant. And I just knew that the yellow would pop and really stand out against the blue. So the temptation was, was too much to resist. Now at this stage I decided to pop in the eyes. Now I like to do this before I do further highlights on the miniature because if I do make a mistake I can cover them up when I'm highlighting the rest of the face etc. I use Contrast Saigor Brown for her shoes. Unlike Elise Duchard, she's not got her feet out. Maybe she needs to see a chiropractor. Hasn't had her nails done, or maybe she's just got hairy toes. Who knows, but she's got nice little brown leather shoes on in this instance. I did want to add some gold to the miniature, so I decided to opt for Viking gold this time. It's a little bit brighter and more vibrant than the Necro Gold I often default to. I wanted this to look like a, a cartoon-esque miniature, as I've already mentioned, something nice and, and, and bright and, and, and really stand out on the miniature rather than anything a little bit more desaturated. You'll notice that I carried on the gold onto the top of the staff and then also onto the bottom of the headdress, which is almost like a crown. For the sword, I opted for the tried and tested black metal base method. This is a really, really easy to paint on with the hairy brush and forms a nice base layer for most metallics. Then while those were drying, I went back to the same highlight blues that I used for the horse's saddle and got to work on her dress. Now this is old school highlighting for you here. If I started with a plain paint blue and this method would work exactly the same as well. You just find that the, the glazing with the contrast method um, really, really gives you some extra guidelines and, and really gives you a richer shadow effect, I think. Now I'm just building these in all the way around the miniature, taking my time, making sure that I'm, I'm not obliterating the, the previous stages too much. And when we get to the higher mix, making sure those lines are a little bit thinner. There's some lace design around the edges of her dress and for that I'm using the Herald Blue and the Off-White as a 50-50 mix. I'm really just trying to catch the edges of that a little bit just to make it stand out. They were needed coming back with the Contrast Talisar Blue. I've just thinned this 50-50 with water and I'm just glazing back in where areas look a little bit too bright or I want to smooth the transition. To highlight the whites, I'm using both white grey and off-white both from Vallejo. The white grey seems to work very well straight out of the pot with a tiny bit of water added and it's very, very smooth. The off-white I am using medium as well as water just to keep it from being too chalky. But just like highlighting in any other areas, I'm leaving the shadowed stage in. Just building up slowly and reinforcing those highlighted areas and you'll see when we move on to the top off white it's really really making it pop and look bright white and leaving that briar queen chill in all the recesses and it just gives quite a, a pleasing effect and a much easier to way to paint white areas than, than would have been if you started off with a with a blue gray or something like that To highlight the hair, I'm using Phalanx Yellow. This is a really, really lovely bright yellow. I added a little bit of water to make it flow nicely and just gently work around and pick out some of the most top areas of the hair, being careful again, as usual, not to get into the recesses and remove those shadows. Adding a little bit of white to the final mix, uh, you can really, really kind of make it pop even more. 
And just as I did with the blue, going back with the contrast I had in yellow, I can just add a little bit of glazing into the recesses just to kind of build that deeper colour back in. Now it's time to start highlighting some of those metallics and we've got dwarven gold here to be the first highlight over the viking gold. Again this is a nice bright and warm gold colour which is what we're going after with this miniature. Then for the top highlights I'm using straight elven gold and then a 50-50 mix of elven gold and game air silver. And just like before with all of the other highlights it's about building it up but leaving existing layers before, looking where the light catches especially with metallic paints. So the elven gold first, really picking it out and making it look shiny and then on the very very tips adding that mix with the silver. Then some game air silver on its own just to highlight the saws. I'm doing a faint line down the raised bit at the centre and then towards the tip of the blade just allowing it to be pure silver and really really shiny. Some model colour chocolate brown as a first highlight on her shoes. Followed up by some flat earth also from model colour as a further highlight on her shoes and then a, a subtle highlight on the saddle as well. Now she has a couple of vials of potions or something on her belt. I'm just using some white grey here first to do a little bit of underpainting and, and brighten them up. Now I have returned them to black and added some, some brown to the tops where the corks would be. So I'm just painting in where the fluid might be in that white grey just so it takes the next paints an awful lot better. And for those colours I'm using a mix. I'm using contrast bow red and some warp lightning. The underpainting effect means you get a nice little highlight and I've just added a little bit of gloss varnish at the end just to make these look like glass. So heading now to the Noctura range from Vallejo for fairy flesh and white flesh. They're not always easy to get hold of but uh, any suitable skin colours will do. I thin these with medium to prevent them from becoming chalky and I'm really just trying to pick out some of the highlighted areas. I don't want to paint over all of the work we did earlier with the dwarf skin express colours and the deep purple and the gloomy violet. They've done such a good job as a method as it is that I don't want to kind of undo those so to speak. So I really am just painting in a few lines here or there across the bridge of the nose a bit of the cheeks and things and then I will glaze them back with those previous colours if I feel I've gone too far I wanted to have slightly rosy cheeks a bit of colour in there so I'm focusing more on the, the tops of the forehead and things here but I'm not putting too much paint down and just kind of cleaning it up and making it pop you can see here I'm just adding a tiny touch of gloomy violet back in just to add that warmth So now she's glued to a horse, I'm using some light sienna pigment and just brushing that straight in to the base, focusing over the earth areas but allowing it to get into the rocks and things as well. Now for some thick mud, European mud, and I bang on about this stuff quite a lot. This is really, really good. It feels like it's got some particles in there. It's more of an effect than a texture, a full basing texture. I know I say this a lot, so apologies to long-term viewers. But I'm just stippling some little bits on to add some further variation to the base. I'm using some 2mm autumn and some 6mm tufts from wall paint figures here. Just going to get a bit of a mix of lengths and things on the base. I even finish off with some nice purple flowers. In the obligatory black rim around the base for my armies. Do what you like. And we have one finished Elsie Ducket. As I say, not as shiny and as beautiful as uh, the Elise Duchard model, nor is the paint job anywhere near the stunning paint job that we saw for the studio work. So I've mentioned this is a gaming miniature. It is a tabletop character, so a little bit more than rank and file. I wanted to show you that you can still get something pretty eye-catching, even if you don't spend forever doing it. It's been buckets of fun doing this, to be honest with you. I had this miniature set aside for later in my army progress, but as that model was announced, I knew that as, as soon as it comes out, whenever that is in a few months' time, this poor lady would probably be forgotten, so I thought I'd paint her sooner rather than later. 
I really do love these older sculpts and uh, really appreciate the, the styling and how they're different. I do prefer new ones. I'm one of these massive nostalgia freaks. I love old hammer and I love some of the old miniatures. But when it actually comes to painting and modelling them, I prefer to work on the newer ones just because they're easier, really, and the detail is more defined. So there were some areas of this miniature that uh, it felt like a much more skilled painter would be needed to make it look really refined and nice. And unfortunately, I'm not that let me know what you think do you like the new model um, do you prefer these old sculpts or you're happy to use a bit of a mix of both like i am um hope you've enjoyed watching the video and have managed to take something from it it's probably slightly longer than some of my tutorials but with the nature of the miniature doing a mounted figure always takes a little bit more time so if you have enjoyed the video, please do give us a like. I really, really appreciate it. And if you haven't done already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Lots and lots of Warhammer Old World content on there and there will be lots more coming. But there are many other flavors of Wargaming if you like to game in different things. So please take a look. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you soon.